This video covers the new layout features for forms and reports in Access 2010. A layout is kind of like a table that you might use in a word processor, only here each cell contains a control, such as a text box, a label, or a command button. I'll start with a blank form and then add some fields from the customers table. In the field list, I'll just double click each field that I want to display on the form. Access automatically creates a layout on the form, which is indicated by the orange grid lines containing the controls. Layouts are optional if you're just building a client database. However, you must use layouts on all forms or reports that you intend to publish to the web. Otherwise, they'll be incompatible with the web publishing feature. I'll go back to the form in Layout View for now, and I'll show you how to make a few changes to a layout. First, I'll resize the column of labels a bit so we can see all of the text. Now I'll right-click the Fax Number field and then select Delete from the shortcut menu. When I delete a field, the label for that field is deleted as well. However, there's still a space in the layout where the field used to be. In general, if you delete all of the controls from a row or column of a layout, the row or column will remain until you delete it. To delete an entire row or column, just right-click it and then select Delete Row or Delete Column on the shortcut menu. I'll put fax number back into the layout by just dragging it from the field list to the layout. If I move a field to a different place in the layout without specifically selecting its label, notice that the label doesn't move with it. I'll click Undo and then select both the field and its label while holding down the Shift key. Now they move together and Access also deleted the row where the field was previously. I've decided that I don't want the fax number on the form, so I'll delete the whole row. In Access 2010 layouts, you can arrange controls horizontally as well as vertically. For example, I want to have the city, state province, and zip postal code fields all on one line. First, I'll resize this column of fields to make it a little smaller. Now I'll drag the state province field to the right of the city field and resize the new column. And I'll do the same with zip postal code. Now I'll delete the old labels and the empty rows. I'll just select a cell in the first row that I want to delete, and then hold down the shift key and select a cell in the other row and now I right-click and select Delete Row, and Access deletes both of the rows. Now there are four columns in my layout. You might think that these empty cells are wasted space, but I can use these cells in a number of ways. For example, I can merge the two empty cells on the first row with the cell that contains the last name field. I hold down the Shift key and click all three cells, and then on the Arrange tab, I click Merge. The field expands to fit the entire space, so now there's more room for long last names. I'll click Undo to restore the separate cells. I can also merge across rows of a layout. I'll merge all six of these cells together, and then use that space for an attachment field. Access adds a new column for the label, which I don't want, so I'll just right-click it and then click Delete Column. If I decide later that I want to subdivide that big cell again, I can use the Split commands on the Arrange tab. Note that the attachment field is still here, it's just getting smaller. Also notice that the borders of the cells still align with the underlying rows and columns of the layout. If I resize one of the smaller cells, I also resize cells that span that column or row. This can result in some unintended consequences as I fine-tune my form. Usually it's best to arrange and size all non-merged cells first, and then merge cells together. I can turn a cell into a label simply by typing in the cell. Of course, I can put any type of control in a cell, such as a command button. On reports, the same principles apply. To delete a column, I right-click it and then click Delete Column. To move a column, I select the field and its label, and then drag it to the new location. 
If I accidentally drag something into the wrong place, I can just click Undo and try the operation again.